Okay. Hello everyone. Let's do some very gentle yoga and I think it's best that to do it at home. Because you can you can summon all the pillows and all the blankets you want and uh, all the family members you like. So uh, I'm going to make a, a throne, uh, a game of thrones, a place to sit on. I'm going to um, add four blocks today to sit on. Oops. <laughs> and one huge pillow to support my knees. I will start the class here. In the cross legs pose, it feels really nice. So sit with your back straight, close your eyes. We start the class by closing your eyes and focusing on your own breath. So try to be really calm. Listen to your heartbeat. Feel the breath. See if you're breathing fast. Slow down. Make you inhale longer. And your exhale will be longer too. Relax your face, relax your shoulders and your arms. position, your hips are higher than your knees and your legs are supported by a big pillow or a pile of blankets or pillow. So it's really nice. I can last very long in this sitting pose. So try to be longer and slower and deeper with your breath and make your inhale and exhale very gentle. You're blowing out and sucking in a lot of air through your nose but you don't want to disturb the air in front of your nose. Fill your lungs up with air when you inhale and squeeze the lungs out with air when you exhale. We will stay here for about three more breaths and then we will get out of this pose Sukhasana which means easy sitting pose in Sanskrit and when you sit like this it's really easy check in with your spine if you feel your spine rounding or changing position 
gently bring your spine back into the straight and strong position and then slowly open your eyes so you can get out this this throne remove the pillow go to need it later let's put it to the side and remove the blocks Let's lay down on the floor with your back on the ground. Bend your knees, put your feet on the floor. I'm going to do supported bridge pose here. So lift your hip up and bring two blocks underneath. So you can use cork blocks or um, styrofoam blocks if you don't have blocks you can use any kind of box or a very big pillows and put them right underneath your sacrum it's a flat bone on the top of your buttock so it's not on your low back it's painful and it's annoying when it's on your low back bring it down just a little bit into the flat bone the sacrum and stay here in the bridge pose supported you can keep your hands holding at your hips or you can just leave your hands to the side of your body with your palms opening up stay here for a while before you straighten your legs on the floor so it's fine if your feet fall to the side just let them go and relax your whole body now it's opening at the front of your hip at the lower of your belly the lower part of your belly try to maintain a long slow and deep breath and every time you inhale you can feel you can imagine or you can visualize you opening new space in front of your hips Now you're in a back bend, but it's a passive back bend. You don't have to work to use any muscles to in to be in this pose. Just let go of your whole body. Let the floor and the blocks hold your body weight for you. If you feel like you are longer in the pose, you can move your heels away from the blocks, move your shoulder away from the blocks too, make yourself longer. Listen to the sensation arriving from your lower belly. It's a very important area of human's body. We reproduce here, so it's very nice to open more space in this area. Spend the time to listen to the any feeling, any sensation that comes. And slowly bend your knees now let's put your feet together and open your knees out like a diamond shape if some of you feel like two blocks is very uncomfortable you can bring one block away and only rest on one block 
So now with your feet touching and your knees opening like a diamond shape within a kind of Bandha Konasana, legs in the bridge pose. It will become a hip opening and after a while it will become quite intense. You choose to get out of the pose anytime you want. But at first, let's just tell your hip to let go, to relax. When you approach a part of the body that has a lot of tension, when you try to stretch it out, it will try to hold back. So at first, just tell your body that this is relaxing and just slow down, be calm with the breath. Relax on your face so that your body can let go at your hips. It will not hold back. The stretch feeling, if they come, if it comes, it's not so comfortable with many people. But try to relax here a little bit before you run away from it. about you but now my belly starts sounding making some funny sounds if it happened to you listen to any signal anything that your body try to speak to you if you feel like this start getting too much let's bring your hands at your hips and support your hips in closing so bring your knees to touch each other then get out of the pose by lifting your hips up so you can use your hand to lift your hips up too take everything really slow remove the blocks and slowly come back to the floor hip closing bring your knees a touch but bring your feet as wide as your mat you can put your hands on your belly stay here and feel how nice it is to have your low back on the floor again bring both knees keep your feet the same distance to each other bring both knees to the right side and maybe you can put your right ankle on the top of your left knee you can open your arms out and look to the left side or you can just keep your hands at your belly here in this twist and because your feet your legs are not together you can feel there's a stretch at the front of your left side your left thighs just relax Listen to any session, sensation that may come up from your left leg, from your left knee, from the side of your body. And slowly come back so you can use your hand to support you and come back to the center. And again, your feet as wide as a mat, fix your pose first before you bring both knees to the left side. Here you have an option. I'm yawning already. You can choose to put your 
left foot on the top of your right ankle and stay here in the twist and look at your right side to me I can feel like my body is asymmetrical because my uh, in this uh, internal rotation position of the leg my right leg is doing it much better than my left leg you listen to your body to see if there's any difference between the two sides on your body notice that and see if it improves Try to relax. Try to let go in your shoulders, in your face. You can turn your face, let your face fall a little bit more to the right side. And in your hips and your legs. Listen to the sensation that come up in your right knee. When you start getting uh, too much to relax, slowly get out of the pose. So use your hand to support your legs. Go back, straighten your legs on the floor a little bit. You can give yourself a nice stretch from your toes to your fingers. You can shake your legs, bend your knees. Huh. And then bend your knees and give yourself a hug. Once you're here, let's turn your knees in a circle movement. So you feel how your low back is being pressed on the floor and change side. Okay, then we're going to turn yourself around and go to a table pose. So for table pose, you can use a pillow or a small uh, a blanket to support you at your knee. Let's inhale the cow pose and exhale cat pose. Very gentle movement. Actually, you don't even need to do cow when you inhale. You can do cow and cat whenever your breath go. You're doing this at your own home, so you can do anything you want. Anytime you feel so sleepy, just lay down, take a nap. Really nice. Right. Maybe some down dog. Lift your hips up, lift your knees up, walk around gently. You don't need to be super strict or strong in the down dog today. View the down dog as a way to slowly warm up and give some stretch to your legs. And then let's bring your right knee outside your right hand. We're going to pigeon pose. Your heel should be in front of your groin and then move back, move back and lay down to the floor. So here to make things uh, more relaxing, I suggest you can use a block or ideally a pillow to sit on. So I'm going to do it like this, it's so nice. And maybe a big pillow in front of you to rest on. So I will be here. Pigeon pose. You can turn your face to one side and later you turn to the other side. If you're cold, you can cover yourself with a blanket. Close your eyes.
and anytime you want more stretch you can always lower the pillow that you're sitting on or you can always move it out of your way move your back knee to the back side of your mat more and more So what I'm feeling right now is um, some very gentle stretch at my right buttock because I'm sitting on all these soft and um, comfortable pillows. It feels absolutely digestible. It feels very nice and sweet. And then slowly get out of this pose. So move yourself up. Bring both hands to the left side. And then turn your whole body so you can sit down to the floor with one knee bent and one leg straight. So if your right knee is bent now, if it's off the floor and you're around it, let's put something underneath it like this. And if it's hard for you to straighten the other leg, let's put something underneath it too, here. So here I'm quite comfortable here. Make sure that your toes are pointing up. We're going to do Janu Sirsasana. If you have a strap nearby, or your, a piece of clo cloth, or anything that looks like a strap, you can use it. So if you don't have a strap, you're going to just do Janu Sirsasana like this. You can let your arm resting on your head here. If you have a strap, wear the strap on your foot. Now let's bring your left arm inside your thigh. You can even hold your head like this. And walk your right hand closer and closer toward your foot and bring your right arm over your head. So it's giving you a stretch from your right hip somewhere to your right arm. Stay here and maintain the long and slow breath. It's a very nice stretch for the side of the body. And anytime you feel like you can go further into the pose, walk your hand closer toward the pose. I mean toward to the foot.
listening to a sign of your body, it will tell you when you are ready to go deeper in the pose and move your hand closer and closer toward your toes. Always keep your arms over your head. Slowly find your way back. Sitting. Still have the strap here. Let's turn your body to face your straight leg. So you can change your leg's position a little bit. Forward bend. Put your belly as close as you can to your thighs. And let go of your head. You can hold the strap here. Or you can hold your foot or your ankle or your toes. So anything you can find on your leg, hold it and stick your body down toward your leg. So it's called Janu Sirsasana because Sirsa is your head and Janu is your knee in Sanskrit. Let your head find your knee. If your head is there already on your knee, you can move your head forward toward your ankles. Let go of your head, tuck your chin to your chest. When you're in this kind of poses, your body will tell you about all the tension that it has on its backside. So listen to your body and see where you find attention. Some people may be in their legs, some people are in their lower back, or some people like me in my upper back and the back of my neck. Slowly find a way to get out of this pose. And then you can remove the locks and such. We're going to try uh, the fire lock pose. So bring your knees on, bring your uh, left leg down and bring your right leg on top so that your right ankle will be on the top of your left knee and your left ankle will be underneath your right knee. So fire lock pose. It's like your shin bones stacking on each other, just like um, fire wood, <laughs> uh, just like fire lock uh, stacking on each other. Uh, if you cannot sit here, I suggest you sit in um, cow face pose, Gomukhasana, with your knees almost stacking on each other. In Gomukhasana, make sure that your hips are both on the floor. But let's try with so in Agni Basana, I'm going to show you how it looks like again. 
uh, it's kind of the same your your right leg is kind of the same uh, position as in pigeon it's accidentally rotating at your hips um, yeah so we're stretching the same part we're opening the same uh, side of your hip let's stay here you can let your head go and this is to me quite an intense stretch but with the pillows like this I can handle it tension out of your body together with your exhale if you don't have a huge pillow like I'm having here you can use uh, a lot of pillows and make yourself the most comfortable so that it's relax and it can open up without holding back. Tell your breath to calm down, to be slow and relaxed, and always checking in with your face, your neck, and your shoulders because these parts are very easy to store up tension. Sometimes, when you stretch something, you maybe you accidentally bring the tension there to store up around your neck, and your shoulders, and your face. So always keep these parts very calm and very relaxed. And you can slowly get out of the pose. Remove the blocks and the pillows. I mean the pillows, we don't have blocks here. And find your way back into the table pose. So get your legs out first. Table pose. You can lift your right leg up. Bend your right knee, do any relaxing movement, pain, big, um, draw circles with your right knee. Maybe there's some strange sound at your joints, but that's fine, do it very gently. And then we will see on the floor, we're going to do pigeon pose on your left side. Bring your left knee outside of your left hand, so you can see your thigh bone pointing out fully. Your heel will be in front of your groin. Go back, so move your whole hips back. If you can sit on the floor, that's great. But if you're not sitting on the floor, a pillow underneath your hips will help. Then a huge pillow or a pile of pillow blanket in front of you. 
It's a very nice option. You just fall down there and stay here. So if you turn your face to one side, let's turn your face to the other side this time. Anytime you feel like you can go further in pigeon pose, move your back knee away to the back side of your mat. Bring your hip down and to the back side of your mat, lower and lower toward the floor. so comfortable here even though this is church at my left buttock you can listen to your own stretch and see how relaxed you are to be in pigeon pose there are a lot of other pigeon pose where we are super active and we're making a big back bend, but absolutely not this case. We simply lay down and rest in pigeon pose. slowly find your way out of pigeon you're going to lift yourself up and crawl yourself to the right side remove the pillow under you and sit down to the floor so now you're facing your right side of the room with your right leg straight and your right knee bent the same to the other pose. Let's support your legs. So let's put an, a big pillow underneath your right knee and put something to support your left knee, the bent knee too. Janu Sirsasana pose. Make sure you sit with both of your sitting bones on the floor. If you have the strap, find it. Wear it over your right foot and hold the strap with your left hand. Bring your right arm inside your leg maybe you can rest your head on the hand and bring your left arm over your head walk along the strap as close to your foot as you can and reaching your arm over your head so in Janu Sirsasana in the twisted variation 
Now stretching from your hips toward your arms. And it's a quite an intense stretch for me in this pose. It feels really nice, especially at my hips. Every time you inhale, you feel that stretch more and more. And every time you exhale, use your imagination again. Visualize how you are bringing the tension out of your body. It's fine if you rest your top arm on your head. But always pay attention to the stretch. you do all these kind of poses at home it's really nice because you can do anything you want it's fine if your belly sound funny or you suddenly need to <laughs> pass air or anything just feel free to do it it's supposed to be the most relaxing time let your body do everything it wants to do listen to your body Spoil your body like a little child. Continue staying here. I need to open the door for my cat. And then we're going to get out of the Janu Sirsasana Twisted and turn to face your right your right leg the straight leg going to do the other the other janu sirsasana you can still wear the strap on your leg turn your whole body toward the right leg that is the straight leg and then forward bend so again janu is your head sirsa so i mean janu is your knee sirsa is your head bring your head down to your knee to make janu sirsasana if your head is not touching your knee it's fine just keep um, letting your head go so maybe your teen is dropping low toward your chest if you are already putting your head on your knee and that's awesome you stay there or you move a little bit forward imagine you want to aim your head toward your ankle hold anything on your leg like your foot or your toes or your ankle or you can hold the strap and stay here And as you're here in this forward bending pose, your body will reveal to you all the tension, all the stiff parts at the back side. Listen to your body and find these tensions. Too many people is at the hamstring, the back side of their legs, back side of their knees. Or to other people, the tension is at the low back, the middle back. 
There's some people like me at my upper back. I feel a lot of tension there. When you inhale, you feel more of the tension. You feel stiff there. And when you exhale, again, think of how you're bringing the, the tension out of your nose. And let's slowly get out of this Janusir Sasana too. I'm going to turn so that you can see me in the fire lock pose. This time you're going to put your right leg underneath and your left leg on top. Stack your knee on your ankle and your ankle on your knee. Yes. Then if you have a gap like I'm doing here, you can put a pillow underneath to fill the gap. If you can't sit here at all, some people have um, restricted in, a restriction in their hip bones, hip joints. You can try to sit in the Gomukhasana pose, cow face pose. It's like this, and make sure both of your hips are on the floor. And so here, I'm going to support my legs with a pillow, and another pillow in front of me, so that I can lay on. And I find the same um, feeling I got in the pigeon pose at the, my left buttock. My left hip is externally rotating, it's opening out, my thigh bone is pointing out. It's stretching the same part uh, like uh, in pigeon pose. So stay here. This, normally this pose is uh, quite a deep stretch for me and uh, it's quite hard for me to stay. But with these pillows, it seems so nice. And I think you can feel the same. So stay here. And anytime you think you can go further, bring your head further away in front of your legs. Just let yourself go and sink deeper and deeper into the pillow or a pile of blanket or the pile of pillow that you have. The soft and comfy pillows are really soothing.
I normally don't like this pose, but here with the pillows, I love it here. It's a very nice stretch. I can feel the stretch, but absolutely not too much. And then we can slowly get out of this pose too. Remove all the pillow. Unlock your legs. And we're going to lay on the floor again. Hey, can you see what time is it? <coughs> Let's lay down to the floor and close your eyes. So if you want to do any other poses before we do Savasana, feel free to do them. I suggest you can do Happy Baby. That means excellent rotation at your hips again. Your knees are pointing out and your arms are inside your legs, hold at your ankle or at your feet. And press your hips, your shoulders and your knees down to the floor at the same time. Your back is very big on the ground. You can turn side to side gently. And you can try to stack your ankle right on the top of your knee. So it's stretching you at the hamstring also. After happy baby, go to a savasana pose. And here I will use a big pillow underneath my knees. So my back can be on the floor. Like this. You can find a blanket in the house and cover yourself. Bring your hands down to the floor, opening your palms up. Close your eyes. You are going to stay here in Savasana. But I'm going to get out of it. So if you look at the screen right now, you will not see me in Savasana. Once you stay here, feel your whole body. See if you need more space for your body, lift your legs up and move away from your knees. Lift your head, your shoulders up and move away from your hips. Lift your hands up and move them to a new position further away from your shoulders. So everything on your body is long and resting and melting on the floor. You have been doing uh, very passive yoga poses, so your body temperature is not raising up, rising. So your body temperature is not rising, you may feel cold. You can cover yourself with a blanket to keep yourself warm. Let go fully of your body. Don't hold anything. Don't try to do anything to hold your body weight. Now the floor and the pillows, the mat, they are holding yourself for you. how you are very soft, you are melting on the floor. Especially your hips area with a lot of big bones and big muscles. All of them are resting. When you inhale, feel the new space that you have opened in your hips.
then when the next time you exhale, feel relaxation in your face too. We often store up a lot of emotions and uh, expression and um, thoughts too in our face. When you exhale, let go of your eyebrows, of your cheeks, your tongue. Let go of them. Keep your face calm, relaxed. And then your mind too. Feel the peaceful feeling in your mind right now. Feel how your head is just resting on the floor. And feel the skin of your head is relaxed too. Imagine all your hair is hanging from your head. Such a nice feeling. Everything is relaxed. stay here and take a nap and wake up whenever you want that's what I love about doing yoga at home or in the next few breaths prepare your mind that you're going to get out of this pose and that also means you get out of this passive practice you're going to be back to active make decision and take the control of your body. Within the next few breaths, let's control your breath again. Inhale deeply into your lungs and raise your chest up intendedly. When you exhale, sink your chest and your belly low. And then you can start telling your body to move. Listen to your body to see which part is ready to move. Let it move first. Move bigger and bigger. Do refreshing movements like a stretch or some twist. <laughs> 